Hey, welcome back. We're working through the conditional probability and independence unit from Statsmatic. This is the formalized part, so we're going to kind of talk about what the math should be, and then we'll do a couple of examples. So conditional probability is defined as, and this, this is defined as P of A given B. Okay, so that means that B happens. B has happened. Okay. So that's already happened. So what you're going to end up doing is that it's actually defined as the probability that A and B happen given the probability B has happened. Okay, so that's how you go through and do it. And I'll show you something down in one of the events so you can kind of get a sense of, because some people usually say, well, wait a second, did we actually use those before? And the answer is eh, kind of, but not really, but that's okay. Independent events, we've already kind of talked about, but let's formalize it out. So when knowing one event has or has not occurred does not affect the probability of the second event. And so the math way of saying that is the prob if the probability of A is equal to the probability of A given B, and that's equal to the probability of A given the complement of B. So then, then A and B are independent. All right. One of the def this is one of those definitions that you just need to know. And they're going to ask you about independence because that's going to kind of give us an idea of whether or not one thing is affecting the other. All right, this is the place. So here's the situation for down here. There's a survey, 100 mothers, ages um, from 4 to 44 in 1976, 1994, and 2014, and asked them how many children that they have. The data is down below in two ways. Number of children down here, years across the top, totals here. Some questions down below, hit pause, answer them, come on back, and we'll talk about it. All right, so here's what we ended up getting. So suppose we randomly select one of the survey recipients. So we have defined event C as having four or more children. S is being surveyed in 1976. N is being surveyed in 1994. F is being surveyed in 2014. So find P of C given S. So this is saying, what's the probability of having four children, because that's what C is, given the fact that they were surveyed in 1976. And so for there, we're in this group right there only. So that means I've got 40 people, 40 mothers who have four or more children, 100 mothers total. So it's four out of 100 or 40%. So given the mother was surveyed in 1976, there's a 40%, there is a 40% probability. How did I miss the word probability? I know. You think by this point, you guys, I would be better. You guys deserve better than this. Anyway, um, that she had four or more children. Given that the chosen mother was not surveyed in 1976, what is the probability she has four or more children? So that means that not in 1976. So that means that we're going to take the other two years here. Okay. So that means I'm going to total up 13 and 13 out of 200. And I get that. So when you do that, you get 13%. Again, you do have to total this up beforehand. Um, yeah, so we're doing it at 200. And then after that, oh, before I forget, and that's the question there is, um, actually I'll do it for up here. Pause, rewind a second. Some people say like up here, it says the probability of A and B over the probability of B. So if we do that, and this is the formal definition, and I like the fact, if you're given a two-way table, doing what we did here works really, really well. But just so you can see it in case you're not. So remember, what's the probability of C and S? So the probability of C and S, what's the probability of having four children and being surveyed in 1976? So if we're talking the entire thing, that's 40 out of 300. What's the probability of being surveyed in the year 1976? 100 out of 300. Denominators are the same, those are gonna drop. And so that's how we end up getting 40 out of 10, which is the same thing over here, okay? So just something for the back of your head because somebody always asks in my class about that, or at least they have the last four years. So thought I would toss that in there. Anyway, moving on. So are these two events independent? We automatically know. We don't even have to check to see what the 66 out of 300 is because these two numbers are already off. And with two sets of numbers are off, that's more than enough to disprove what's going on. So no, the mothers in the survey in 1976 are more likely to have four plus children than the mothers not surveyed in 1976. Boom, so therefore they're not independent. All right, that's it. We've got one more section left. I will see you in a few minutes or at least a few days, I would assume. We'll talk to you soon.